Lisa Smith is safely home in Ireland after a number of years abroad with ISIS in Syria. Her state-funded solicitor is already saying she isn't guilty of any terrorist offences, that she was only in the company of ISIS members, and that there's no proof of any wrongdoing. It takes a particular type of person to bat for this woman in public, but sure enough, this guy's willing to. Listen to this from her solicitor. And there, at this stage, there's absolutely no evidence that she's been involved in any terrorist organisation or terrorist group. And, and we must be clear that the word Islamic State is not necessarily uh, a direct link to ISIS. Of course, there are all those connotations. However, the underlying uh, and, and unfortunately deep political and religious background to the term Islamic State goes right back to uh, pe 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 people's particular beliefs as to what they believe to be a euphoria or a euphoric place. OK, well, let's hear her in her own words. Here she is talking to journalist Norma Costello, who interviewed her for RTE News back in July. And during the course of that interview, she said very clearly she had joined Islamic State, but she also said very clearly that she did not fight for them. I don't know if they would believe it or not, but that's the truth. <laughs> you know, whether they believe it or not, I, that's up to them, you know. But I'm telling you for myself, uh, I didn't fight. Really? Why? What did I do? I just joined the Islamic State and now I become a monster. How am I a monster? I came here to Islamic State and I didn't do anything. The solicitor is well matched with Smith, it seems. Both are willing to employ whatever word salad necessary to weasel their way out of a tight situation. The news comes only days after an Islamic extremist killed two and injured many more on London Bridge. He had been released from prison early, only serving half his sentence for plotting bomb attacks on London. And sure enough, he finally struck when given the chance. The whole episode is a stark reminder that de-radicalisation programmes are hopelessly naive attempts at taming an ideology that can almost never be tamed. Next up is Mohamed Morai's trial, due to start on December 9th for the murder of a Japanese worker in Dundalk and an attempt to kill two others. He was the young man who snuck into Ireland and quickly went on the rampage. But here's the take home message. The people shouting for open borders are messing with an enemy they evidently know nothing about. Ireland will inevitably go the same way as the UK with regular Islamist attacks unless we all push back against lax immigration policies that overlook poisonous ideologies.